Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. We have 1 plus square root of 3i to the power n equals 64. n is an integer or does it have to be an integer? We'll find out. And we're going to be solving for n basically. So let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems. I'll be presenting two approaches. Let's start with the first one. So for my first approach, I want to go ahead and just try something. For example, what would happen if I took 1 plus square root of 3i and then squared it, right? And why am I doing this? Because I'm guessing. Could n be 2? Is this a method? Really? I mean, it is. Guessing and checking is actually a problem-solving strategy. May not be a method. Uh, well, it's a method anyways. So anyways, let's go ahead and square this. I got 1 squared minus 3 and then plus 2 root 3i. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so this gives me negative 2 plus 2 root 3i. Great. I did not get 64 and I got a complex number, but my result is supposed to be no imaginary parts. Real, right? The answer is real. So maybe we're going to find what we need with the cube, right? What happens if we cube this? How do you cube it? Well, here's the thing. You can take the square and multiply by the number itself. That's one way to do it. Another way would be just completely cube it directly from the formula. There's a formula for a plus b cubed. No matter what you do, you're going to get the same thing. Negative 2 minus 2 root 3i plus 2 root 3i. Uh-oh. And then we got... 6i squared, which is minus 6, and this gives us negative 8, and these two numbers cancel out. Nice. You know why is it, why it's nice? Because I get a real number. It's a negative number, and I didn't get 64, but I'm so close. You know why? Because if you square both sides, you're going to get the right answer. Isn't that awesome? Guess and check, right? It works sometimes. It's easy, sometimes it's too hard. But if you raise this to the second power, or square both sides, you're going to get 64. But wait a minute, these are complex numbers and they should have, or they might have more than one solution. Well, that's with the roots. With powers, there should be a single solution, right? I mean, a complex number raised to a power is unique, but if you talk about raised to something like one over three, that's a different story, okay? Great. So we got the answer, and n happens to be, what, 6? Okay. So that looks like it is a solution. But the million-dollar question is, is that the only solution? Can there be something else that would multiply 1 plus root 3i to another power, and we should be getting 64? Now, in some cases, you could probably get away with something like this. Maybe I can take 1 plus root 3i and then multiply it by e to the power 2 pi ni, which is 1 in the complex world, and then maybe raise it to the power n, but that's not really going to help you because this is just going to bring another one into the equation. But if you're going backwards with the roots, this type of approach will probably help you. Anyways. This is just by guess and check, and did I say I'm going to be presenting three methods or two methods? Well, I think it'll be three. Okay, never mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach. So my second approach is kind of like uh, going directly with the polar form, because guess and check may not always be efficient. You know, sometimes you may not even find the answer, but it's always worth a try, because you never know, right? If you have plenty of time, of course. If it's a test, that's a different story. Anyways, so how do you write a complex number in polar form? Thanks to Euler, we have something called r e to the i theta. Great. r is the modulus, right? Or the absolute value. And theta is the argument or the angle. So how do you find that information? If you think about 1 plus root 3i, it's just going to be 1 unit this way and root 3 units that way. So it's going to be like this. And if you connect it to the origin, it's going to be like a vector. This is 1, this is root 3i. And now we have an angle that can be defined as 
pi over 3 radians. It's kind of like a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the argument is going to be pi over 3 because this is a longer leg. This is a shorter leg. And that's a special triangle. And from here, I can safely say that, hey, this number can be written as, by the way, what is the modulus? It's the from the Pythagorean theorem. It's 2. It's going to be 2 times e to the power i times pi over 3. Great. Now, when you raise it to the nth power and you get 64, you're, you're probably thinking, how do I get 64 from here? Easy. You just need to raise 2 to the power n and e to the power i pi n over 3. And this is equal to 64. Here's the trick. How do you get 64 from 2 to the power n? n needs to be 6. But wait a minute. Is 6 actually going to work? Because it also needs to satisfy this. But yes, when n is equal to 6, you're going to have a multiple of 2 pi, which is going to be 1 in the complex world. Remember, we talked about it. So n equals 6 will definitely work, and that seems to be the only, only solution. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method, because I think the third method is really cool. And sometimes you may not even need polar form because this is just awesome. Okay. Whenever you have an equation with complex numbers, always think about taking the absolute value on both sides. Because if z equals w, then their absolute values are equal. Because absolute value is a function and it's supposed to be well defined. Make sense? You can't get two different absolute values from the same number, obviously, right? That's just unique. So that means that I can take the absolute value on both sides. And if I do, I have a nice rule that says, hey, you can pull the power out. And if you do that, this is going to be real cool because now we can take the absolute value. And obviously, the 64 is a real number. Its absolute value is 64. Even with the complex definition, it is 64. So now, what do you do? First, you find the absolute value of 1 plus root 3i. And that will be a 2. And then from here, you get 2 to the n equals 64. Wow. That's pretty clean, isn't it? And that means n is equal to 6. And remember, we were trying to solve for n. So once we find the answer, we are done, right? OK, great. So this should normally bring us to the end of this video. And I forgot to include the solution from Wolfram Alpha. But guess what? It is going to give you the exact same thing. So there's nothing that much interesting about it. That's why I didn't probably include it. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out my other channel, CyberMath, and bye-bye.